Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're making one more state falling for our FPS controller before we move on to adding weapons. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to use the written version of this tutorial or download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. So our character already falls because we've set up gravity. So why on earth do we want to create a whole new state for falling? Well, new states in general means we have more control over what happens when our player does certain things. Right now, when our player walks off a platform, the current state stays the same. By adding a falling state, we distinguish between when the player is actually on the ground or when they are falling. This allows us to set unique settings when the player is falling, say, shooting accuracy or camera movement. For this episode, we're going to focus on adding an animation when we land and letting the player double jump after falling. As usual, we'll need a new child state node and state script that extends our player movement state script. The tutorials for both of these are in the earlier episodes and I'll leave a link to them in the description. First, we'll create our falling state script. Then we'll make slight adjustments to our idle, walking, and sprinting scripts so we transition to our new falling state. We'll create a new class name and extend our player movement state script. Then four export variables to give us customization options for our max speed, acceleration, deceleration, and the velocity of our double jump. Then like we did in our double jump episode, we'll add a Boolean that will track whether the player has already double jumped or not. When we enter our falling state, we'll pause our animation player so we don't have any leftover head bobbing movement. Then in our update function, we run our usual update gravity, input, and velocity functions. For our double jump, we'll check if the player presses the jump key and if double jump is false, i.e. they haven't double jumped yet. If that passes, we set our double jump boolean to true and then our player's y velocity to equal our double jump velocity. Then once the player is on the floor again, we play our jump end animation and transition back to idle. That jump end animation was created in the last episode when we did our jump animations. Finally, when we exit our falling state, we reset our double jump boolean to false. Within our idle animation, we've already coded a check to see if our animation is the jump in animation, and if it is, to finish it. And from here, the player can walk, sprint, crouch, and jump. To transition to our falling state, we'll add a check to our idle, walking, and sprinting states. Our if statement checks if our y velocity is less than negative three, and if the player is not on the floor. Using an exclamation here is just shorthand for not true. Why check for negative three velocity? Well, if the player just falls from a short distance or hasn't been falling for very long, having an exaggerated falling animation doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So we check if the player is falling fast enough before we actually transition to falling. You could also check the distance the player has fallen, but for now, just checking the Y velocity is a little bit easier. This transition check can be added to any state where you want the player to have the ability to fall from. For example, I've left the sliding state untouched, but I've added it to idle, walking, and sprinting. You should now have a new falling state where you can fine tune any player interactions while falling. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider a like and subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.